Yeah, we'll get started. Uh, San Jose State week. Uh, guys, I thought did a great job yesterday, kind of putting uh, Mercer away and uh, learning from that, and then moving on to the next opponent. Our players of the game on offense was Tank Bigsby, defense was Cam Riley, special teams was Jarquez Hunter. Our O lineman of the game was Brandon Council, D lineman was Colby Wooden, and then uh, we had a couple academic guys, uh, Brendan Frazier and Zion Puckett. Uh, were recognized yesterday. So, um, yeah, really from the game, uh, kind of we talked about it afterwards. Uh, I thought we did some good things. Um, we did not win the turnover battle. That was one area that, you know, we have to improve on. We did run the ball effectively. And then uh, we weren't very good in the red zone in a couple areas on the defensive side. So we addressed that in our meetings. Uh, we talked about it on the field. And that's something that we still have to keep emphasizing uh, going into the second week. So it's early in the year. And like I said before we played, you know a lot more about your team after four hours. And uh, I thought we did some good things. It was good to see some new faces out there. And um, now we have uh, really a game to work with going into this week, um, know the things we have to get better at for each individual player, and then what we have to do as a offense, defense, special teams, and as a program to get better. As far as San Jose State, very good team. Know this team well. Um, Coach Brennan does a great job of getting his guy prepared. Um, they do a really good job of game planning. That's one thing. And they're always physical and uh, their guys play hard. So uh, no doubt about it. That's exactly what we'll get. Um, not going to get into all their schemes and, and things like that, other than the fact that this team will come in here prepared and ready and they will have uh, a plan uh, to try to attack us. And we just have to make sure that we're ready and we focus on the things we have to do to get ourselves prepared to go play our best football, all right, in the second game. So with that, questions? Sure. Ron, look at, at quarterbacks after having a chance to watch the fan. What, what stands out about TJ and Robbie and what you saw from them after, after one? Yeah, I think the question, let's just go to the, the turnovers. You know, one was a poor decision. I think trying to make something. We know sometimes the defense has things covered, and you try to force the ball in there. So it was just a decision, and the other one was poor fundamentals. That's why the two turnovers happened. Um, so it's pretty matter of fact, and those things happen in practice too, right? And it's not just TJ, it's every quarterback. You know, that stuff when you're coaching that position, um, great decision-making, fundamentals, all those things matter. So we cleared that up and we moved forward. Uh, I thought other than that, both guys operated well. We had one false start, uh, which wasn't the quarterback's fault. So we didn't really have many penalties. We got ourselves into the right plays. Um, we didn't have any delay of games or anything stupid that way, so they actually operated the offense well. Um, they communicated on the sideline well. They made adjustments. You know, so really just all the things you want to see, you know, getting out there on the field, those guys have to play. There's going to be mistakes that are made. Uh, but overall operation, I thought both guys did a really good job. And the back and forth, we knew that was going to happen. Not everybody else did. So that wasn't anything new for us. We knew that, that Robbie would be in there. We knew the back and forth would happen. Um, and sometimes, you know, we got a chance to, to keep Robbie in there because we're winning the game. And uh, TJ had had some more reps, obviously, over the course of last year and and started the game. So to keep Robbie in there, we kind of have the game. We're winning it. Felt like that we would continue to keep winning the game. So we wanted to get him some more opportunities. What do you expect to see kind of that same thing again in game two? Kind of both guys. Well, maybe not the same number, but. Yeah, it's hard to tell. I mean, every game plan's a little different. I mean, I expect both guys to play. Um, but as far as like the number of it, how we utilize those guys, I mean, we're, we're working on that right now. Every opponent's different. And the other thing as well is just how the week goes in practice. I mean, we had a couple of guys yesterday, they were sick. They weren't even there at practice, right? And that's just, that's the nature of what we do is at the end of the week, I mean, things can change only because a guy gets rolled up, guy gets sick, something happens, um, whatever. So, those guys, uh, Zach, he'll be ready as well. Holden's coming on. I mean, we're still working these guys to prepare them to play. There's nothing that's just been truly settled in on, uh, especially going to the second game. And you start getting that game three and four, you probably know your team a little bit better. And then, you know, you're just hoping that injuries and those type of things don't happen so you can keep those guys that have been playing healthy, fresh in the game and, and, uh, and continuing to develop your team over the, the course of the season. Um, just to reiterate, so there, there was nothing to read into. I hope you go well. There's nothing to read into.
not come back in the game after the second interception? No, not really. I mean, we just felt like TJ was um, – he had played well up to that point and had, had the two turnovers. And then we had Robbie in there, and we thought that he had – you know, he was playing well. We were winning the game. We wanted to keep him in there and get him some more reps. And, you know, he also had to play, too. I, I think it was on social media. You guys saw, you know, the one that we came out after the lightning delay and Robbie's running down the field and goes and blocks for Tank. I mean, that was something we emphasized as just being a football player, right? Jarquez Hunter, you know, going down there and driving down the field and scoring and then running down on kickoff and, and is 10 yards ahead of everybody else and makes the tackle, blows through a guy, makes the tackle. I mean, he's a football player, so... Um, I think there was some of that too, you know, and coach key saw, I mean, I listened to what those guys say, like, let's keep these guys in, let's keep them rolling. Let's keep doing these things. Uh, Cause maybe that package of plays is working well and we want to stick with it. Um, that was really the biggest reason, but yeah, the turnovers, we don't want that. We, we don't want the turnovers at the same time. Those things happen. Um, you know, on the flip side too, we got to create turnovers on defense. We got to find ways to, to get off the field on third downs. We have to create turnovers. We got to do a better job in the red zone. So it's never one guy, I'm never going to single out one guy. And, and uh, that's never been the case, uh, in my opinion. So uh, I wouldn't read too much into it. We go back to work tomorrow and we'll see what our game plan looks like later in the week. And then we'll start packaging things. Um, so when we get into the game, we know who's going to be out there. Just to follow the second part, um, what about Javarius Johnson? How he's been able to develop and how that match? Yeah. Yeah, VAR is, you know, he missed most of spring. And he came out there for, I think it was the first practice, and he pops his hamstring. So he misses most of that. And then he comes back in the summer, and he's had a good summer. Um, I think his attitude's been great. I think his effort's been great. He's a really good football player. He's back there catching uh, punts, got a chance to do that. And then we got Keontae Scott back there. We wanted to see him. We felt comfortable with VAR, but we, we feel like Keontae's a guy that can be back there. So we got a chance to see him. Uh, but a bar makes plays. You know, that's one thing. He's he's kind of a veteran a little bit for us. And you got Tavares Dawson out there who's young. And he got a chance to get in there and make some plays as well. Had a nice catch and a third down that was behind him. Uh, but overall, I think, you know, VAR is going to continue to keep getting better and help us. And, you know, he can he does make plays. You saw that. I know he wanted to get in the end zone in a couple of those, right? You're just that close to punch it in there. And that's the goal, right? To try to take that thing and, and put it in the end zone like he did against Arkansas last year and complete the catch and run and, and score touchdowns. But he can do those things for us. Yep. Well, we had to play three in 2019 when I was at Boise. And the third guy ended up being undefeated in the MVP of the championship game. So you start with one guy gets hurt, you know, and we were 12 and one lost one game by three points that year and played three quarterbacks. And the third guy was the MVP. So to me, like this whole one quarterback system, like I think everybody um, feels like if you have two guys playing, there's some controversy or the, or the one guy's not good enough. I just started to look at it like these guys are all football players they're here to play just like our tailbacks, just like our tight ends, just like our linebackers. And if they're good enough to play, then we should find a role for them. You know, and that just philosophically, ever since I've been an offensive coordinator and really back when Chris Peterson was the offensive coordinator, we always did that. If guys deserve to play, we tried to find a role, not as much as we do now, maybe with our QBs, but we try to get guys on the field. And I think that just gives guys, you know, hope that they can go out there and play, including your quarterback. So, uh, it doesn't really impact us necessarily as far as calling plays and doing all that. Like we have packages, we have plays. Um, both guys can run the set of plays that we have in the game plan. So if we want to keep one guy in, uh, and as the game went on too, I mean, we could have took one guy out. We kept one guy in. We could have went back and forth. I mean, that's kind of the beauty of it. And I've done it here, done it at Boise, done it at Texas, you know, but those guys deserve to play. Sometimes you have to do it. It's not always ideal. Yeah, in certain cases, but when you got two good players and those guys deserve to play, it's not much different to me than than any other position at this point. Uh, Brian, uh, right guard, uh, DeAndre and Cam both. Yeah. Uh, chance to split a lot of reps on Saturday. What did you see from those two on film, and, and will that sort of continue to think some of the supports? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, we'll see how the week goes and all that. I thought both guys played well. You know, we didn't have a ton of uh, penetration up front. 
So for the most part, I thought we did a good job that way. There wasn't very many guys in the backfield, and that's kind of what you gauge in the run game. Uh, I thought both guys covered up, ran their feet, did what they were supposed to do. Um, and, you know, that happened back in camp, too. Probably Stutz had a little upper hand. KJ started coming on. So both guys, you know, we're trying to just figure out who that right guard position is. And, you know, if something happens at, at center or left guard, too, right, those guys, they can bump around. They can play both. Um, so we'll continue with that that formula right now unless something changes. But I thought they both played pretty good. Yeah, Mark, you talked about the offensive line as a whole, how they play, and also Tate Johnson. Yeah. Yeah, I was proud of Tate. I thought he did a really good job. You know, he um, he handled himself well. I thought even on the sideline, breaking the huddle, getting on the field, taking ownership, and just making sure that we're on time. We have a sense of urgency to get everybody there um, and, and prepared and ready to go on the field. I thought he did a good job of all that. So... Overall, the offensive line, I mean, I think they were solid. You know, we ran the ball well. We did some good things. So there are tailbacks. They broke some tackles, made some plays, and and uh, which is what our tailbacks should do. Expect those guys to play like that. But overall, I thought the O-line, protection-wise, run game-wise, is pretty solid. And there's a few things in there that we got to clean up, some fundamental work that will get done this week, uh, which is always the case. But overall, I thought that group played well. What about the play of the, uh, the defensive line? You had one sack. Was it penetration, uh, the kind of pressure that, that you wanted? Um, no, I think, you know, I thought we did a good job in the run game. I think we could have had a few more sacks. We missed some tackles. And that's that's the first game. That was one of the areas that you always feel like, you know, did we do enough work? It's it's hard to it's hard to tackle live anymore in practice. I mean, hardly anybody does it. Some teams might do it. You might do it in one on one situations, but it's all that live work. Their quarterback, Mercer's quarterback, did a good job. He was slippery. I thought their plan, um, they were a little bit different than than what they had shown. You know, their plan was um, to kind of throw it, move the pocket, and they did a pretty good job of that. And I thought their quarterback's a good athlete. That's a good football team we played. They're going to win. They're going to win games. They're going to be in the playoffs. They're going to do all those things. So, um, but we need to we need to be able to make those tackles when we get a chance to do that. And our guys, that's something we'll work on again. Uh, on Tuesday, and now they got some live bullets. It's not our guys because you never get to tackle the quarterback in practice. And that's the unfair thing for the defensive guys is we never put anybody back there live to let them tackle them as a quarterback. And I don't know many teams that do. So then all of a sudden, here you are, and you see that quarterback moving. This is your first chance to to go tackle them. They probably get a little excited about it. Uh, so learn from that, move on. Now we know. Uh, be no different this week. The, uh, San Jose State's quarterback transfer from Hawaii. I mean, this guy can go. He's really good. He's very athletic. He's smart, tough. I've seen him play, um, and he's he's really elusive. So you got to you got to be in great position and uh, be able to make those plays in the open field. And I thought Cam Riley did that. He had 15 tackles, but you saw that from Cam, right? You saw some guys that were doing that. We just got to do a better job at the D line overall. Coach, with the offseason and the fall camp that you had, you spoke a lot about maturity. Focus and everybody knows this is your team and you're, you're remaking them to the football program. With the being game one, did you see that carry over to the game? Some of that focus, that camaraderie that you were looking for? I did. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it before the game. Really, everything leading into the game. You know, I mean, the the one thing that we're really trying to be is a great football team together. I mean, that's one of the areas that that we've emphasized. Uh, I'm really proud of our guys and their personal goals that they have for themselves and accolades and all those things. But it's about the team. And so I thought I saw that uh, during the game. I didn't see a bunch of issues on the sideline. Now we're winning. So that's one thing, right? I always tell the guys when things are good, everybody's good. And so it really comes down to that. I mean, I want no part of guys that if we're winning the game and they're all about themselves, that just doesn't fit. That's not what a team sport is. And that's the hardest thing right now that, that we are all fighting, I think, in, in this sport is just how everything is individualized. It's all about me. It's all about what I'm not getting or what I am getting. And we've all made it that way. And as a coach, like that's not how you win, in my opinion. You're trying to play as a team. And since January, we've talked about team and just being one and all. That's the only message these guys have heard. And it's the simple together, everyone achieves more. I didn't make it up, but that's really what it comes down to. And it's almost, it's one of those tasks that is more challenging now than it's ever been. Um, 
Because I know we got guys that didn't play, and and they're not happy, but we won the game. So, you know, you gotta you gotta kind of pick your poison a little bit. Is it going to be about me, or is it going to be about the team? And and I tell the stories like we just talked about. You know, guys that I've coached before. He's a third string guy. Ends up being the MVP, right? Because he didn't pout. He kept working. I uh, kept grinding, doing all the stuff that everybody talks about. And um, anymore, you know, it's so much about me, me, me. And if you don't like it, you leave. You know, and I just, I mean, to me, that's a hard concept to grasp because I don't think you can really achieve what you want to with that model. But it's the model that we're in right now, and it's the one that we're battling. And it's the one that we're accepting, you know, right now and in everything that it's okay to do that. And I think we we don't have we don't have um, the luxury to do that. We got to be we got to stay together as a team. All right, that's our advantage. Um, if if we don't, that's a complete disadvantage. And I've seen that model before. Justin, not, not all of them got catches. <clears throat> Yeah, they were good. I thought they were a little nervous. Some of those young freshmen that got out there, which they should be. You know, I think it's first first experience. I think they're a little nervous. Um, they knew what to do, but you could just tell. Right, they'll be much better this week, and just kind of getting out there and having a chance to play. I mean, this this is a this is a big thing. Right. I know they played before, but to go out there, I mean, just think about it. Like you're playing you know, SEC football and you're in that stadium and you got 80,000 people or whatever in there. I mean, it's a big deal. So you can see that. And no matter how you talk about it, it's just you got to go do it. Now they've done it. Now they got a taste of it. Now they've been out there. They they filled the grass. They got a chance to play a little bit. They'll be better this week. But overall, they lined up right. Um, you know, we didn't have any issues with, like I said, we didn't have any stupid penalties. We didn't have any alignment issues. We didn't have any false starts from that group. So they knew what to do. So I felt like going into the game, they were prepared. I just think now it's a chance for us that we can play faster. We can play better. All right. We can ease, kind of eased them into it a little bit, I guess. And now we can go out there and, and we got to go play. We don't have any time to ease into anything else moving forward. Yes, Brian. What did uh, Brandon Council show you to be the player of the game on the offensive line? Well, first play, I thought he he just started running his feet. Really, I mean, that's that's what we're going to see from your offensive line. He ran his feet, sustained his blocks, um, played physical, you know. And I think from what he's been through to to get back out there and play, you know, it was good to see him go out there and just kind of showcase what he's capable of doing, but also. It's a little bit of all the work he's had to do to get to that point. You know, he's he hasn't had it easy from his injuries and he hasn't had it easy from us. We pushed him hard, um, you know, whether it's weight, getting in shape. I mean, it's just like the guys, the guys been through it. And then to have him go out there and play and have success and we ran the ball the way we did, like that's kind of that's everything leading into that. All right. I wouldn't say it's just from one game. It's every single thing that he's had to do to get to get himself to that point to where he earns a chance to go out there and start play, play well, and then also be recognized as the, as the lineman of the game. So I think there's just a lot more to his story than, than just this one game to, to be recognized for that. Uh, Brian, I just have time to watch the field. What did you think about your secondary play, particularly against that quarterback? Um, yeah, we need to be better. We need to be better. I thought, uh, you know, the guy moved around and, and uh, you know, we had some guys that were uncovered at times. So we need to do a better job in the back end. You know, to me, like I have a really high standard for our secondary and I always have. I think if that ball is in the air and just speaking from an offensive coordinator, if they're going to put the ball in the air, we should have a chance to go compete for the ball. That's what I think you do in the back end when you have a good, a good football team. Um, I want to see our DBs. I want to see them compete for the ball. If they make the catch, if he places it perfectly, if he can do all those things and as a quarterback, great. Then we'll we'll accept that and we'll move on to the next play. All right. But if they're gonna put the ball in the air, we gotta have a chance to compete for it. And, you know, I know our guys want to do that. And I believe in our guys. When we have a chance to compete for the ball, we're gonna come down with it. So I wanna see our guys, you know, play a little bit more. Uh, we, we just gotta do a better job. All right. We gotta be we gotta be in position. We gotta play with great eyes. DBs, they're trying to do so much. I mean, guys are running around. You got to tackle a guy. You got to cover a guy. You got to see where the back's at. You got to see all these things in front of you. A lot's going on. And, and so 
the intensity of how you have to practice at that position is different because of all the stuff you're asked to do. And then, you know, when you get a chance to compete on the ball, go make a play. Jason, uh, what, what's the next step for um, the wide receiver? <clears throat> passing game in general now that you've got a game on your belt? Uh, just keep building on what we're doing. Yeah, I mean, it's really uh, – I don't have an answer for that because it's going to really be up to what we do in practice, all right, how we look. I think the schemes were there. You know, I really like what what uh, Coach Keysaw is doing. I like the schemes. I think the the coaching points are there. I think the stuff that we need to do, um, we're doing it. Now we got to go make the plays, and that really comes in practice. You know, are we hitting this stuff in practice? Are we hitting those things on a Wednesday and a Thursday? Are we detailed on stuff that we're doing? Uh, do we feel like we got the right personnel in there to do it? You know, and that's the other part too. Like, look. We can go watch somebody else and you see a play and you're like, well, why don't we run that? Well, maybe, maybe we don't have the personnel. Maybe it's just a different, you know, different uh, philosophy as well. So we got to, we got to make sure that we continue to build on what we did last week, build on all the stuff we did through spring ball and fall camp. Cause we still have a ton of things that we haven't ran yet that we got to go back to and make sure that we're still executing those at a, at a higher level. So we'll see how practice goes. Uh, I'm big on that. I mean, it's to me, Everything that we do in the game plan comes from what we do in practice, every single thing. So how we practice is how we're going to play, and I think you know, now our guys understand that. So if we're not doing something in practice, if we want to run this play and a guy goes out there and we had a 50-minute meeting and he just decides he didn't pay attention and doesn't want to go execute the play, I mean, he's out. That play is out or he's out. You know, and that's, that's part of earning your opportunities to – to be better in the past game or for us to be able to expand what we're doing in the past game. Yeah, well, we need to get him out there. Um, he can play, he'll play. You know, we'll get him in the rotation, get him in the mix and all that. But he's, you can call him whatever. I mean, he's whatever we need him to be, right? From tied into wide receiver, but he is playing wide receiver. And now, you know, we'll see how he fits into the rotation this week. and and where we can utilize them. But, you know, we got to get him on special teams as well. And he's one of those young guys that's up and coming that just needs to keep working and we'll get a shot. And when he does, I know he'll go out there and make plays for us. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, thank you guys. Have a great day.